Hello everyone and welcome to our first video lecture on multimedia technology. Here we will discuss the human visual system HVS and the human auditory system HAS. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at the basic structure of the human visual system. It starts with the eyes, the optic nerve and parts of the brain. The system transforms electromagnetic energy or light into visual information. This process occurs in three main steps. First, there is the image formation, where the light passes through the cornea, the pupil, the lens, and then gets focused on the retina at the back of the eye. The fovea is a small area within the retina, which is responsible for our sharpest vision. The second step is transduction, because the retina contains specialized cells called rods and cones, and these cells detect light and convert it into electrical signals. The rods are more sensitive to low light, while the cones are responsible for color vision. And the final step is processing. Once the retina has converted light into electric signals, these signals travel through the optic nerve to the brain, where they are interpreted as the images that we see. Now, what is the difference between rods and cones? There are about 120 million rods in human eye, which responds to low energy light and help us perceive contrast and shades of gray. Rods are highly sensitive and are concentrated outside of fovea, making them essential for seeing low light conditions. In contrast, there are about six to seven million cones, which are responsible for color perception. And these cones respond to high energy light and are most densely packed in the fovea. Cones enhance our ability to see the details and color, while three types respond to different wavelengths of light, namely red, green and blue. Now let's discuss the three stimulus theory. As mentioned, there are three types of cones. Each is sensitive to a different wavelength of light, namely L cones for red, M cones for green and S cones for blue. The ratio of these cones vary from person to person, which can influence how we actually perceive the color. And these cones are most responsive to narrow bands of electromagnetic waves, with red and green absorbing the most energy and blue cones being less sensitive. Brightness, color and visual system processing are the key components of how we perceive the world. The human visual system transforms light into sensory experiences for example, brightness, or also called luminosity or short luma, is how sensitive the human visual system is to light intensity, and it's more sensitive to brightness than to color. Interestingly, about 8% of men and 1% of women are colorblind, which means that they can distinguish fewer colors than others. And if we understand how the human visual system processes brightness and color, then we can optimize media presentation, media processing and compression in multimedia technology, as we will see in further parts of this lecture. Finally, let's look at the field of vision. The highest spatial resolution of the eye is in the central two degrees of our field of view, which is why we must move our eyes so frequently in order to capture all the details. And this area contains the densest concentration of cones, that gives us the sharpest color perception. However, fewer rods exist in this region and that's why it is much harder for us to see in low light conditions. So that's the overview of the human visual system. Now let's dive into the auditory system. First of all, sound is a physical phenomenon caused by the vibration of material objects. And these vibrations create pressure wave fluctuations that travel through the air. And as we can see here in this picture, the sound waves propagate as a series of compression and rarefactions, or in other words, contradictions and expansions, which the ear detects and processes. Now, the auditory system itself consists of the ears, specific parts of the brain, and complex neural pathways. And when sound waves arrive at the inner ear, they create pressure changes 
that move tiny hair-like fibers inside the cochlea, which is our primary organ for detecting sound. Now these movements generate electrical impulses which travel to the brain and this is how we actually perceive the sound. The cochlea here is especially sensitive to different frequency with specific regions corresponding to low, medium and high pitches and this allows us to perceive the wide range of sounds as we hear them every day. Sound perception is also linked to psychoacoustics which studies the relationship between the physical properties of sound and our auditory experiences. So we have psychoacoustic models that allow us to encode and decode audio in a way that reduces the data rate without affecting the quality of the sound significantly. One very well known example of a psychoacoustic model is used in MP3, which compresses audio in a way that preserves all the parts that we can hear well but throws away all the rest that we typically cannot hear. And that's how it can effectively compress the data in an audio file. Sound can be described by pose, physical and psychological parameters. Physically, we distinguish between the frequency, the amplitude and the phase. Whereas the frequency determines the pitch, amplitude relates to loudness and phase affects how we actually combine sounds. And psychologically, we perceive sounds in terms of loudness, pitch and timbre, where timbre is especially interesting because it is what we understand of a specific distinct sound of a musical instrument or voice in its unique quality. So this is a complex pattern of multiple frequencies combined in a way that creates this distinct sound experience. Sound intensity refers to the rate at which sound energy flows through a given area. And this is measured in watts per square meter with a threshold of hearing or TOH starting at extremely low intensities and the TOP or threshold of pain at much higher intensities. To quantify this, we use the decibel dB scale, which measures the sound intensity relative to the threshold of hearing level. A 10 dB increase here means that we have a tenfold increase in intensity. Here we see the intensity of everyday sounds measured in decibels. Whispering is around 30 dB, while a normal conversation is about 60 dB. Sound above 120 dB, like at a concert or a jet engine, can cause pain or even damage our ear. So this chart gives a good reference for understanding how different sounds compare and we can also see that the human speech typically happens around 200 hertz up to 8 to 9 kilohertz normally around a dp value of 30 to 70. moreover the figure also shows that we cannot hear audio even at 40 dp if the tone is too low or too high and this is a non-linear function across the entire frequency range here Finally, let's look at the interpretation and the use of the decibel scale. Every 10 dB increase represents a tenfold increase in sound intensity. For example, a sound that is 30 dB louder than another is 1000 times more intense. We can also combine the loudness of multiple sound sources using an energy combination formula, which we can see here, which helps us to understand how sound levels add up in real world situations namely by computing 10 times the log of a sum considering all n sound sources, where each sound source is represented by 10 to the power of the corresponding intensity divided by 10. And that wraps up our overview of the human visual system and the human auditory system. Thanks a lot for watching.